What's going on apes? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the OP03 pre-release. So hopefully you guys got into at least one pre-release. You know, I got into two. I know a lot of you guys got into two, three, four, whatever it is. Some stores do back-to-back -back ones on the same day. However many you got into, I know this time it was a lot easier than OP2, which is great. Um, so yeah, like I said, hopefully you got into at least one. I'm sure you did. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching this video. So. Uh, as most of you can recall, I made the same video for OP2 pre-release, it was a huge success, and I've had a lot of feedback for you guys asking for an OP3 pre-release video, so here it is, guys. But before we get into it, I just want to apologize. You know, I haven't put out a video in a few weeks. Um, I went away on vacation for a couple weeks, and then I started a new job since we don't have enough subscribers to quit our career outside of YouTube. So if you would kindly subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. So thank you guys. Okay, so let's just get right into it then, guys. So firstly, I'm going to talk about the leaders. Um, I'm not going to talk about these four because I did talk about them last pre-release. Uh, they are amazing, still amazing to play right now. I just do want to stress that Whitebeard is still very viable. I played against a couple of them last pre-release and they were very difficult matches. Um, having that 6k leader is just super, super strong. After those four obvious choices, we've got three new viable ones. So, first we've got Nami. If you guys don't know what she does already, if your deck hits zero cards, you win the game. It doesn't matter when, if it hits zero, you win. If it's in the middle of them attacking you for game and you have a, an event card that draws you a card and it puts you at zero, you automatically win right there. Now, if you draft a couple good blue cards, Nambi becomes very viable because as you guys know, Sealed is a 40 card deck. You get five in your hand, five in your life, leaving you with only 30 cards to mill. And honestly, it's very, very possible to do. I don't think that it's amazing, but it does seem like a lot of fun to try for sure. And if you do draft some really good milling cards for blue, like uh, Owner Zeph and stuff, like those can definitely outright win you a game with the alternate win condition, right? And, and again, you can still win by just uh, beating them down. Obviously, it's more difficult because your leader doesn't do much, but um, it's definitely worth trying in a 40 card deck. After Nami, we've got Luchi. And honestly, he's only in here because I didn't just want to show you guys two new leaders. He's kind of a worse uh, Captain Kid, but better in some situations, I guess. Probably not worth playing though. I, I think I would play Kid over Luchi, but uh, it it's definitely something you could try. You know, there's definitely going to be situations where uh, Luchi will win over Kid, but I think Kid will win majority of the time. And then lastly, we've got Katakuri. So, I think this is definitely the leader that I'm going to play. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons to play him because a lot of the yellow cards uh, synergize well with Big Mom Pirate leader, so it's just phenomenal. And his ability is just, it's just very good, right? Um, there's a lot of good trigger cards in this set and his ability makes him a one dawn 7k attack where you can peek at your life and then move it either to the top or bottom so if you hit a good trigger um something that will save you you can stack that on the bottom to save you later or if you know that a trigger is coming you might play your cards differently and again one dawn commitment for at 7k and sealed is just it's very good so honestly i, I think this might be uh, top three leaders to play in sealed period. So now we can get into the character cards, but I'm gonna warn you guys This set is a little bit underwhelming for sealed in comparison to OP2 at least in my opinion OP2 had a lot of god tier cards I remember saying like this this card is god tier this card is god tier, right? Whereas here there's there's a few but I, I feel like it's not nearly enough and there, there's a couple cards that I put in as, as a stretch you know like 35th to 40th cards just because um it just it just seemed a little bit more underwhelming, but um, even the 2k the 2k counters there's only I think seven 2k counters in this whole set. I don't remember how many there were in OP2, but I think there were there were over ten or maybe at least ten. I remember drafting quite a few uh, 2k counters. So anyway, let's get right into it. Um, like last time, I'm not going to talk about every single card, just the ones that I think are good enough to make sure that you draft in your sealed deck. So first, we've got Curiel. I would say B tier. A 5k rush, but can attack leader on the turn that it's summoned. So it's good in sealed because oftentimes you want to clear their board, and having a rush card is just, it's very good in general. Even though it can't hit their leader, just the fact that you can attack on summon 
even though you're not attacking leader, it, it's great. It, it's it's good and seer, sealed. I don't think you're gonna draft as many better cards where you're never gonna play this card. Like it, it's just good. Just play it. Uh, next we got Thatch. Uh, one cost, four K. It seems like good value for what it is. It's likely gonna get in one attack for very little dawn commitment, which is really important because if you guys played the last pre-release, you'll know how short the games are. It's basically just one quick aggro game. So after him, we've got Marco. Sick card in the set, phenomenal, one of the best cards that they release in this game. You know, it's 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 up there, it's god tier, in, in every red deck's gonna be playing it. Phenomenal card. In sealed, it's good, it's great. Um, it's... it's good. It's a 5k, or 5 cost, 6k body, right? So it's also removal, and you can also bring it back if you draft a lot of event cards. I think you should be drafting a lot of event cards in this specific set because there are a lot of there's a lot of synergy cards with events. So if you do happen to draft a lot of events, I think Marco is A plus tier. Um, if you don't draft a lot of events, I think Marco is B plus tier. Next is uh, Lim, a two a top two blocker for sealed. When it's KO'd, you can give minus 2,000 power to an opponent. So this can t potentially block two attacks with one block, right? If they go swing and then you block and minus their leader by 2k and they have no more dawn to put on their leader, you're essentially blocking two attacks with one. So this is definitely a top two blocker in the set. Um, another one is later in, in yellow, I believe, or black. But uh, there are a couple good blockers. Obviously, you're, you're, you're going to play every blocker that you draft because you're not going to draft a lot of blockers and it is important, but this is definitely one to uh, make sure you prioritize. Next, we got Fire Fist. Now, this is another sick card that they added to the game. You play it and discard an event to KO a 5k and a 4k or less on your opponent's board. So, that's just amazing. In draft, especially if you play a lot of events, uh, it's a good thing you don't have to discard red specific events. So that makes it 10 times better in draft because you can discard a purple event and, and use the effect, right? So definitely worth playing. Like I said, same thing, same case as Marco. You know, A plus if uh, you, you draft a lot of events and B plus if you don't. And then Craig. So uh, Craig is god tier. Uh, definitely, definitely god tier. So on play, you trash a card and KO up to two of your opponents rested four or less cost characters. So this is phenomenal in uh, sealed in draft because if you, like I said, if you guys played the last one, you'll know that a lot of people play the three cost and four cost vanillas and that applies so much pressure in sealed. Like they just play the four cost 6k vanilla and, and they're just beating your ass in with it. You know, Craig is that, that card that you can drop and just absolutely destroy them you know it, it blows out blows them out of the water it, it wins you games it's it's god tier if you draft it multiple play both just probably one of if not the best card in sealed in this set and then we got buggy um buggy is b tier very playable it's just good i would play multiple copies it could literally win you the game it, it's, it's just worth playing and then kaya so this is definitely one of the better uh 2ks 2k uh counters You'll probably never summon it, but there may be cases where you need to fix your hand, and, and it could definitely come up. So obviously, again, you're playing every 2k that you draft, because you're not going to draft a lot of them, but this is just one that you need to keep in mind. You may be summoning this over discarding it as a 2k counter. And then we got Zeph. So Zeph is, I would say, B+, you know? He's good in general, uh, 6k body and it has a bounce effect, but if, you, if you're playing Nami as your leader, because if you, if you draft multiple Zephs, might be worth playing Nami, <clears throat> but uh, if, you, if Nami is your leader, this card is god tier. And then Sanji's Pilaf. So B plus tier, drawing can be very good, and the trigger is amazing. Um, the only thing that doesn't make it god tier is just it, it costs three. You know, if it costed two, it would be it would be god tier for sure. But it, it's a very fair card at three dawn. It's just the trigger is really, really good. You always want to see that in your life, you know? And we got 3,000 worlds. Uh, it's just strictly good removal in seals. Holly is B plus tier. He can be expensive to use the entire effect. That's kind of what's holding him back from A tier. And then we got Rob Lucci. A plus tier. Um, I, deba I debated putting this in God tier, but it's just not there. I don't know what it is. 
Um, he's good in every way though. You might have a chance to rest a blocker and go for game with him. It's just a great card to play in sealed overall. And we got Gum Gum Jet Gatling. I put this in A tier, but I'm a fan of the zero cost events, especially in sealed because it can catch people off guard and you can punish them on the crackback. You know, nobody's expecting you to have no dawn up and all of a sudden you're using a, an event to, to gain a bunch of um, attack on your leader, right? It's just, it's very unexpected. It can win you games. Then we got Isho. Uh, a tier, you probably won't get the effect off, but if you do, you'll literally win the game. Uh, another sick card that they released, the artwork is unreal in the alt art. Like one of my favorite characters in the show is just really good card. And then Virgo. So honestly, this might be the best card in sealed. I, I, I think that this really just might be the best one. Um, it doesn't, it's, it's an average card outside of sealed, but uh, if, you, if you draft 20 of them, put all 20 in your deck. If he has a Dawn, he cannot be KO'd by battle. So, like, you literally, you need to draw maybe one of your removals if you drafted a removal to get rid of this card. Otherwise, you're getting hit by six every turn, right? Because you're putting the Dawn on it. Then we got uh, Khalifa, a 2k that fixes your hand. Um, I would say A tier, unless you pull an alt art, and then it's probably god tier. Then Blue Note. Uh, a tier easily, huge blocker, and if you can get the effect off, it becomes god tier. Next is Six King Pistol. Again, I'm a fan of the zero cost events, I don't really need to explain this again. Then we move on to yellow, we've got Charlie. So again, you have to play all blockers, but this is the other one that's uh, near the top in terms of better ones, especially if you have a lot of triggers in your deck, and especially if your leader is um, Katakuri. Then Cracker. Uh, Cracker is a plus tier for sure. 1k counter, good effect, and great trigger. So you can the trigger is that you can discard a card to summon it off of your life so like even if it's the the first damage you take you know like you choose to go second or you get put going second they play they make their turn one play you make your turn two play and they swing at you turn three and you're playing a 5k body literally like on the second turn of the game and you're gonna swing with the next turn in sealed that is amazing but uh it, it's just it's really good uh, it's really good outside of the game too, you know, it's played in Big Mom, but it's a great card. And then we go to Smoothie, who's a very similar, uh, not effect, but the exact same trigger. So, you know, also B plus tier. Um, her effect is that you can ditch one of your life and she gains 2000 attack. So it could be used to, to game shot them, but I probably wouldn't use it unless I'm going for game. But again, that, that trigger alone makes her just really good. And thirdly, we got Paro Sparrow. Uh, also high tier for similar reasons as the other two and even higher tier if you draft a lot of big mom cards that you can add with his effect then we got uh charlotte Lin, Lin we got big mom herself this card is god tier if you are playing katakuri and if you're not you probably shouldn't play it in your deck because it's just a 10 cost 12k beat stick not worth playing but again if you draft this definitely consider playing katakuri because this card is amazing it's one of the best cards they've ever printed it's just Amazing card. After Big Mom, we got Sovereignty. Um, I would say it's C plus tier. I've been playing a lot of Big Mom testing it, and I hate this card um, in, in modern format, but uh, the trigger is just too amazing not to play it in the deck. So again, playable, plus it's an event. You can discard it with those other cards. It's just, it's just worth playing. And then uh, Thunderbolt. This is another card that I play in my Big Mom deck. I don't like it as well, but it is a necessary evil. Uh, it's also a um, an event card, and I would put it in D or C tier maybe. You know, it's kind of a last resort thing. The, uh, the only specific example I can think of where it'd be excessively good is, you know, you're ready to go for game, and you've got a life left, and they've got a blocker on the field or something, and you can use it to get rid of their blocker. But again, removal is good if they have a, a problem card, like Virgo, for example, you know, that card can kill Virgo, but not many cards in the set can, so it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely worth putting one in, I would say. And then we have got Soga King, uh, I would say A tier, the only thing not making it God tier is the stat line. Um, next we've got Sanji, 
A++ tier. I don't want to put it in God tier, but A++ tier. So, it's a 2k counter, which already makes it, you have to play it. But his effect is that he can swap the top or bottom card of your life with the top card of your deck if he has two Dawn when he attacks. So basically, uh, two Dawn investment to play him. Next turn, two Dawn to put on him. He's swinging for five. You're drawing a card. You know, it's just... How is that not good? Plus, it's a 2k counter if you need it. And then lastly, we have got Katakuri. Uh, another sick card that they printed. A lot of ways to play this card. But I would put it at C plus tier and sealed only because it's got a lot of restrictions like um, the attack of the card that you can stack or the cost. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys a mock deck that I drafted up. Uh, so this is 50 cards, a couple 2k counters, you know, a lot of vanillas, um, a lot of blockers, and a couple of big cards. So last time I did this, um, I told you guys how you really want to make sure that your curve is um, around the four to six spot, you know, that sweet spot. So I, I learned the hard way in my pre-releases last time. I think it is actually very important to play maybe um, two to uh, five cost cards. Those are, those are actually like the very sweet spot, right? So if you see my cost curve here, um, it's all lower cards and no bigger cards, right? So. I found the most difficult matches in pre-release were the ones where my opponents were just spamming the board with uh, three cost vanillas, four cost vanillas, and just constantly swinging every turn, right? I'm forced to pitch cards, I'm forced to take the attacks, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm about to drop, I have an option to drop my eight cost character or ten cost character, and I'm looking at no life, it, like no life left, right? What am I going to do? I can't, I can't play my ten cost character now. So I do suggest playing uh, a significantly smaller curve this time but yeah um i hope you guys enjoy the video i hope you guys do very well in your pre-release you know um thank you guys for watching um i will be posting a box opening next week for the new set so you guys can come check out some of the english cards uh, so stay tuned for that and don't forget to hit that subscribe button thanks apes